students, graduates, family and friends, and faculty. My name is Doris Ribio, and I am the director of the Institute for Clinical Research Education. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the 2020 virtual Institute for Clinical Research Education's graduation ceremony. This year, we have 92 graduates from our degree in career development programs. All of you should be very proud of what you have accomplished in your time at the ICRE. We recognize that our programs are demanding as we strive to prepare you to be in the best possible position to launch your career. Whether you've participated in our degree programs in clinical research or medical education, or one of our many career development programs for trainees across the pipeline, and graduating today, you will become one of over 1,000 alumni of the ICRE. As an alum, you can count on our continued commitment to your success, and we pledge to support you as you progress along your career path. We look forward to hearing all about your accomplishments and achievements. And now I would like to introduce to you our 2020 keynote speaker, Dr. Edward Barksdale, Jr. Dr. Barksdale is the Robert J. Eisen, Jr., MD, Professor and Surgeon in Chief at Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital, University Hospitals, and Case Western Reserve School of Medicine. He currently works at the nexus of academia, clinical surgery, medical education, public health, and social justice as a passionate advocate for child health and health care. He endeavors to invest his academic, clinical, and service efforts to inspire individuals and transform communities at the precipice of hope in one of America's greatest but most distressed cities. Dr. Barksdale began his academic surgical career at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine as an assistant professor of pediatric surgery and rose to professor with tenure, serving as interim chief of pediatric surgery from 2004 to 2005. Dr. Barksdale was named as the first Eisen Endowed Chair and Chief of Pediatric Surgery in 2007 and then Surgeon in Chief in 2012 at the Rainbow and Case Western Reserve University. Dr. Barksdale has a message for our graduates. Graduates of the ICRE program, class of 2020, congratulations, and I am so delighted to join you, your families, your friends, significant others, uh, on this momentous virtual celebration. Dr. Rubio, Dr. Kapoor, and members of the faculty, I appreciate the invitation to return to a place that I often see as my second home, Pittsburgh. Although I'm getting used to giving Zoom lectures, it still feels a little bit awkward doing this for a graduation or commencement celebration. You know, those days, these days are often great days when there are the beaming smiles of parents and friends, mothers who are crying, grandmothers who are proud, and babies just wondering when the speaker will just shut up. Uh, and so I can't take those, those normal cues that I normal would, normally would, but I'm still delighted to join you, and I look forward to speaking with you this morning. I really look forward to meeting you and uh, understanding your diverse careers and the dynamic pursuits that I've read about when I've looked through the program. I realize that by virtue of your enrollment in this program, that we are kindred spirits in the passion to have impact in science beyond the bench through collaboration and effective leadership. We are clearly living in unprecedented and uncertain times. Although it might be easy to lament that you can't imagine a worse time to be graduating or entering the workforce, I would encourage you not to let the chaos of the panic of, of the panic cloud, I'm sorry, to let the chaos of the panic cloud your blue sides. I would like to counter this view and unequivocally state that I can't um, Imagine a better time to be creative, talented, driven, and collaborative. All the traits that have been cultivated in this program. This is an inflection period or tipping point in history. A time when those who are poised with knowledge, talent, creativity, iron will, and a moral compass can move society, if not the world, toward exponential progress in so many domains. You are the chosen. As Horace, the Roman lyrical poet wrote in the first century BC, 
adversity reveals genius. I think you guys are good. As one of my favorites, Martin Luther King wrote, let us realize that the arc of the moral universe is long, but trends toward justice. America and the world is craving your talent and leadership. So I hope over the next few minutes that my comments today will resonate and kindle a small flame of enthusiasm for you, not just as scientists, academics, future industry titans, or policymakers, but I hope that it will generate an inferno of action to have, for you to have an even greater impact on the trajectory of our world as leaders in society. Daily, in the midst of the current crisis, it is clear that there is a high demand for leadership, not the me first type leader, but those leaders who have the capacity to collaborate, connect, and inspire people, not because of their indomitable might or will, but because of the immense compassion they've built based on their scientific knowledge and clinical training. I call this the boundary spanning leader driven by a sense of humanity and Ubuntu. And so with that as a preface for my talk, I would like to entitle my talk, Rivers, Bridges, Chopsticks, and Ubuntu Leadership. You know, um, I left Pittsburgh 13 years ago, May 30th. I lived in Pittsburgh for 13 years. Pittsburgh is still so much a part of who I am, although I live now behind enemy lines here in Cleveland. You know, a, a few months ago before the crisis, I had my annual physical exam uh, checkup with my new primary care doctor, and he has a nurse in his office who draws the bloods. And she drew my blood, and she saw something that was unusual. Uh, I was a bit frightened. She called him in, and he looked at my sample of blood. And when I looked at it, nothing seemed wrong. But he said, your blood is black and gold. Well, I have to tell you that despite 13 years of being away from Pittsburgh, I still bleed black and gold. As a child, I vividly remember the first time I ever came to Pittsburgh. I grew up in the South and we came one night. It was actually a Friday evening. I was five years old. That was 55, six years old. That was 55 years ago. And what was striking to me is that we came through the Fort Pitt Tunnel. And for those of you who were born and raised in the Pittsburgh area, you probably take this for granted. But when you see Pittsburgh as a child for the first time, it is incredibly electric. And in the 60s, it was, the city was all lit up. And then right along the river to the right, I think that's the Monongahela, uh, there was fire coming out of the tops of the buildings. And I, I later came to know that those were uh, the furnaces uh, the that uh, were part of the steel industry. But for a young kid from a small town in the South, this was like, as my kids would say, now, this was truly fire. Uh, we were visiting my uncle, who was a steel worker who lived um, just north of the city in Beaver County, and uh, he was really proud of Pittsburgh. And the next night, he took me and gave me an experience that I will never forget. He took me to Mount Washington. And when he took me to Mount Washington uh, with my family, and we stood on that peak and looked down on the city of Pittsburgh to see these two mighty rivers forming a single river, it was just, uh, it was truly special. And this view remains indelibly etched in my mind and spirit, not simply as an image of power and beauty, but also as a tremendous metaphor of unity, not just for the city, but also for the real region. I call it Steeler Nation. Uh, when we came to live here 26 years ago, I would love to go to Mount Washington and to rekindle that sense of awe about this mighty city and the three rivers that really characterized it. As many of you know that in many parts of the world, the rivers do not unite the region. They actually serve to socially distance 
the people, separating cities, states, or countries by social class, ethnicity, culture, or history. In Hungary, beautiful city on the Danube, Budapest is actually two cities, Buda and Pesh. In Massachusetts, the Charles River separates Cambridge and Boston. And in Ohio, the Cuyahoga separates Cleveland into east and west. The river creates geographic, ethnic, chronological, and cultural divides. While the three rivers in Pittsburgh, again, unite. They unite the region. The second prominent feature that I remember about Pittsburgh, I didn't really get to appreciate until we moved to Pittsburgh. And you know, what most people think about Pittsburgh, they, they think about the hills. What I think about Pittsburgh are the bridges. The bridges are what connect you from one hill to another hill over a gorge and over uh, a river. And uh, in, in fact, when I lived here, it was urban legend that the Berg had more bridges than any other city in the world. Well, not so, but not far from so. Uh, the Berg has, is the fourth most bridge city in the world. And for me, again, a very strong metaphor for this city. The city is highly connected. And when I was in Pittsburgh as a junior faculty member, going from assistant professor to full professor with tenure, I felt incredible connections, not only to the academic arena, not only to my community in Wexford or in Sewickley where my kids went to school, I felt incredibly connected to Pittsburgh. As I said, I moved to Pittsburgh 26 years ago in order to establish my academic career right after training. And, uh, you know, as many people coming out of training, I had an I, me mentality. I wanted to build a lab, I did. I wanted to be a successful clinical surgeon. In my mind, I did. Uh, I wanted to teach, I did. Uh, I wanted to do things in the community, I did, I thought. But what I recognized when I reflect on my time in Pittsburgh and any of the things that I did and any of the awards that I won, it was not an I thing. For me, Pittsburgh was always a we thing. And I remember strongly and deeply the people who cultivated that growth, but also uh, that professional growth. They also cultivated that understanding that it is the power that exists is because of the we that exists in power. And I remember the chair of surgery who recruited me, Richard Simmons, who would always quote Harry Truman, who would say that it is amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. And in many ways and in many places while I was there, I realized that adopting that mentality allow me to go further in my career. You are today, or a few weeks ago, finishing a program that epitomizes the ethos of Pittsburgh. As translational scientists, you are the classic connectors, like the bridges, described by Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Tipping Point. You are those special people who link us up in the world, people with a special gift for bringing the world together. This is the type of leadership we need now in these uncertain times. I believe that you are those emerging leaders, and I believe that you are the people who can take the yoke of responsibility and lead us. Classically, as translational scientists, you have been described as bringing bench and bedside together. I like to think that you should change the way you see yourself. You are not only uniting the bench and the bedside, but you're also uniting the boardroom, that is business and Congress and, and government, and the bedroom. And what I mean by the bedroom is community. Because the real changes that we need to make in health and healthcare uh, are a connection between the bench and the community. And particularly in a place like Cleveland, which suffers intensely under the weight of the social determinants of health, 
highest child poverty rate in the country, highest infant mortality rate in the country, amongst the highest lead poisoning rate, as well as intense childhood adversity due to uh, non-accidental trauma or child abuse and uh, direct violence. We need your leadership. My favorite hero of all time, after my father, is Nelson Mandela. I admire how he dealt with adversity to become a strong leader driven by values both inside himself as well as outside of himself. I was excited to see him on the Esplanade in Boston in the 1990s when he made his U.S. tour after being released from 27 years of imprisonment. And since that time, I've read almost everything I can about him because I wanted to know and understand how he became so strong and purpose-driven in the setting of such intense adversity. My study introduced me to the concept of Ubuntu. Many of you may be familiar with this concept, but for those of you who are not, it is an African term that describes a way of life or worldview. Poorly translated into English, it means I am because you are. In my opinion, this philosophy is the quintessential expression of the highest aspirations for our own humanity and our own impact in the world. For me, it conjures up a beautiful image of my own childhood growing up in Lynchburg, Virginia, when I could walk for five blocks in one direction and three blocks in another direction and tell you the name of the families that lived in every house. I knew them, but more importantly, they knew me and they cared about my well-being and they cared about my safety. It also conjures up for me a cautionary admonition that my grandmother gave me growing up. She told me that the world will teach you that the smallest unit of human existence is the individual. But in the Barksdale family, the smallest unit of human existence is the family. Our family is meaningless without you, and you can't find your meaning without us. She also went on to say that if our, if our family couldn't connect with others, then in her words, it was not a community, it was just a community. If we just lived in the neighborhood, but we really had to have relationships and to treat our neighbors as though they were us. She called this, in her words, common unity. In South Africa, they would call this Ubuntu. Ubuntu, for me, puts an exclamation point behind the Claude Bernard quote that says, art is I and science is we. It emphasizes that those of us who aspire to be successful in the realm of translational science must embrace Ubuntu, not just as a life philosophy, but as a leadership mantra. I am because you are. I am because you are. We only need to turn on the TV to see leaders who embody the antithesis of this and how detrimental it seems toward local, regional, national, and world unity. I would like to challenge you today to accept the ICRE Certificate, Diploma, Award, or Recognition for your hard work, pursuit of excellence, and brilliance. I'd like you to accept this or see this as an academic gauntlet that has been placed in front of you to challenge you not just to develop new drugs, ensure medical devices get to market, organize clinical trials, disseminate information, but I'd like you to use this to inspire you to build bridges and to develop communities, not only your professional communities, but also to develop neighborhoods and health and healthcare in neighborhoods to unify people. And please connect to unfamiliar communities. I want you to embrace the Ubuntu mindset. I call this being a boundary span spanning leader. You were built for this. As I close, I'd like to share with you a brief story um, that I think brings a lot of this together. It is a Chinese fable known as the fable of the seven foot chopsticks. Uh, you may or you may not know this fable, but it really describes heaven and hell, and it describes the difference between heaven and hell. So a prophet walks into this great 
room. And as the wise man walks in the room, he is shown a gigantic banquet table with the best food that has existed in the history of man. And he is told that on one side is heaven and on the other side is hell. And he sees the people sitting around the table on the heavenly side, and he sees the people sitting around the table on the hell side, and they look the same. But in front of them, each of them has seven foot chopsticks. And so after a while, he watches them and he looks at the side of the people who are on the side of hell and they can't use those seven foot chopsticks to feed themselves. They can't get the food to their mouth. They're frustrated and it goes on and on and on and on. And out of their frustration, they starve. They become gaunt, starved, and they ultimately die. When he looks at the other side of the table, the heavenly side of the table, he sees something different. He sees that on that side, they have taken their chopsticks, and I can't get mine open, <laughs> but they've taken their chopsticks, and instead of feeding themselves, they are feeding their neighbor with those seven-foot chopsticks. And they're all happy, robust, and fat, and, and, and well-fed. And there's so much frivolity in the room. So I, I think that we need to think about this allegory or a fable of the seven foot chopsticks. When the people at the table embrace the Ubuntu leadership concept, they thrived. When they uh, embrace the me first concept, they perished. So today I ask you, I challenge you that we must rewrite the script. We must encourage and support the development of a new type of translational scientist or physician one who will be comfortable at the bedside as she is in the, bed, in the boardroom, as compassionate in the clinical setting as he is in the community, and as innovative in the lab as she is visionary in society. He and she must always be clinically, scientifically, and morally prepared to speak truth to power based both on scientific data and a foundation of Ubuntu. We need to develop those boundary-spanning leaders who will not just allow us to move faster into the future, but will allow us to go further. I thank you for this opportunity to share some time with you. Have a good day. Have a great career. I look forward to working for you one day. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Galen Switzer, and it's a real pleasure to share in the celebration of our graduates today. This is truly one of the highlights of the year for me. Several of our program directors will now recognize each of our graduates. As the director of the PhD program in clinical and translational science, I have the opportunity to work with a highly motivated and exceptionally accomplished group of students who are at various stages in their research and clinical careers. Today, I am so honored to recognize four outstanding graduates from the PhD program. Our first graduate is Amber Hill. Amber plans to return for her fourth year of medical school at the University of Pittsburgh and to apply for a pediatrics residency in the fall. She will continue her research on the intersection of substance use and adolescent relationship abuse with the Division of Adolescent and Young Adult Medicine. Next, I'd like to recognize Colleen Judge Golden. Colleen is a fourth year medical student at the University of Pittsburgh and will complete her residency in obstetrics and gynecology. Our next graduate, Sarah Myers, is continuing her training and working towards a career in academic surgery. She hopes to supplement her clinical practice with her ongoing research focused on disparities within the field of surgery. The final PhD graduate is Arielle Shensa. Arielle will continue in her role as statistician in the Center for Behavioral Health, Media, and Technology in the Division of General Internal Medicine. Arielle is actively seeking a faculty position in biostatistics. Congratulations and best wishes to our incredible cohort of clinical and translational science PhD graduates. My name is Thomas Radomsky, and I am the Director of Clinical Research Programs at the ICRE. And I am honored to first recognize our Master of Science graduates from the Clinical Research Program. Amanda Artson. 
Amanda will continue as a faculty member in urogynecology at UPMC and is pursuing a career development award to continue her research on the contribution of the host response to urogynecologic mesh complications. Michael Belsky. Michael is a fourth year medical student at Pitt. He is planning to apply to otolaryngology residency programs in the fall. Daniel Bernian. Daniel will begin his general surgery residency program this summer at Allegheny General Hospital. Karhai Chu. Karhai will continue as an assistant professor of medicine, pediatrics, and public health here at Pitt. Amy Collins. Amy will begin a dual appointment as faculty at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh in the Division of Adolescent Medicine and a staff physician at Allegheny Reproductive Health Center. Ziad Faramond. Ziad will continue as a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Pittsburgh and UPMC and will pursue research through the acute care, emergency medicine, and cardiology divisions. Cassandra Formek. Cassandra will continue as a faculty member in the Division of Pediatric Nephrology at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. She will pursue research through the Department of Pediatrics in the School of Medicine. Kimberly Xiang. Kimberly will be starting residency in the Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Fast Track Program at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Lauren Huckabee. Lauren will continue as a general surgery resident at UPMC Presbyterian. She plans to pursue a fellowship in cardiothoracic surgery. Erica Johnson. Erica will continue in her internal medicine residency at Pitt and UPMC. Amy Kennedy. Amy is moving to Los Angeles where she will be working for the LA County Department of Health Services as an HIV and addiction specialist. She will continue to pursue research and QI in a leadership role in her new position. Furkan Kadak. Furkan is now an internal medicine fellow at East Tennessee State University. Amelia Luchisano. Amelia will complete her general surgery residency at the University of Pittsburgh and continue to a fellowship in a general surgery subspecialty. Christine March. Christine will continue as a faculty member at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh in pediatric endocrinology and diabetes. She will continue in her research on school-based care for children with type 1 diabetes, supported by an Institutional Children's Scholar Award. Kyle Markle. Kyle will be resuming his last two years of residency training within the Division of Vascular Surgery. Megan McCormick. Megan will start as a faculty member at the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh in the Division of Pediatric Hematology Oncology. Kia Nicholson. Kia will continue her surgical research as a TL1 postdoctoral fellow for one more year before returning to finish her clinical training in general surgery at UPMC. Kathleen Norbach. Katie will continue as a faculty member and clinician scientist within the Department of Pediatrics at the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh in the Division of Emergency Medicine. Brian Orr. Brian will continue as a gynecologic oncology faculty member at UPMC McGee. Natalie Pace. Natalie will be moving to Nashville, Tennessee this summer to begin her residency training in urology at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Vikram Ragu. Vikram will be spending the next year as a clinical fellow in pediatric transplant hepatology at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh while continuing to perform research in cost effectiveness and clinical decision making. Catherine Reitz. Catherine is currently finishing the second of three academic years within the general surgery residency at UPMC Presbyterian. She plans to pursue a vascular surgery fellowship. Laura Cease. Laura will continue as a resident physician in cardiothoracic surgery at UPMC. Morad Senussi. 
Murad is moving to Houston, Texas, where he will be the director of the Cardiac Intensive Care Unit at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center and director of Cardiac Critical Care Education. He will continue to pursue research in the realm of cardiac critical care and help build and foster the training of future generations in this field. Clark Veet. Clark will be joining Lehigh Valley Health Network in Allentown, Pennsylvania as a primary care physician and associate medical director for outpatient quality and patient safety. Now for our certificate in clinical research graduates. Karen Chrisamore. Karen will continue pursuing her PhD in pharmaceutical sciences as a TL1 postdoctoral fellow. Amelia Diego. Amelia will continue on as a faculty member in the Department of Surgery and is currently involved in the research endeavors of the Breast Surgical Oncology Service. Kathleen Doherty. Kathleen will continue as faculty in the Division of Hematology Oncology at UPMC Presbyterian Shadyside. She will continue her ongoing clinical research in hematologic malignancies. Chigozirim Ekeke. Chigo will continue as a cardiothoracic surgery resident physician at UPMC. Krista Hamaker. Krista will pursue medical school and has hopes of being admitted to a medical scientist training program. Katherine Krukenberg. Katherine is joining the psychiatry residency program at University of California, San Diego. Rajil Mehta. Rajil will continue as a faculty member within the Transplant Nephrology Division at the Starzl Transplant Institute. He will continue his pursuit of clinical and translational research. Jennifer Newitt. Jennifer will continue as a sleep medicine fellow in the Division of Pulmonary, Allergy, and Critical Care Medicine here at Pitt. Claudia Ramos del Aguila de Rivers. Claudia will continue as an analytical research scientist at University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine, Division of Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and nutrition. Wen Zhu. Wen will continue to pursue clinical research through the Department of Neurology at the University of Pittsburgh. Finally, our three graduates from the Certificate in Clinical and Translational Science for doctoral students in the Health Sciences program. Dina Maurer. Dina will continue in the Immunology and Microbiology PhD program. She hopes to finish her PhD degree this upcoming fall and pursue a career in industry. Joshua Nisnik. Joshua is now an assistant professor of medicine in the Division of Geriatric Medicine at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine. Chen Xiao Tang. Chen Xiao will continue to finish her PhD training in the University of Pittsburgh School of Pharmacy. She will pursue research in drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics in critical care medicine. I wish to extend my most sincere congratulations to all of our clinical research graduates. It is my pleasure to recognize our medical education graduates. I'll start with our Masters of Science in Medical Education, Megan Acho. Megan will be staying at UPMC after completing her Pulmonary Critical Care Fellowship in June for a Sleep Medicine Fellowship. Ali DeKrub. Ali will join the Medicine Pediatrics faculty here at Pitt as an Assistant Program Director for Ambulatory Education within the Medicine Pediatric Residency Program. Adam Janicki. Adam will continue to serve as the Emergency Medicine Residency Assistant Program Director and Co-Director of the Fourth Year Emergency Medicine Rotation. Brianna Ketterer. Bri is moving to Portland, Oregon, where she will join the Oregon Health and Science University Palliative Care Team and continue her work in medical education within its School of Medicine. Andrew Klein. Drew will be joining the faculty here at Pitt as a clinician educator and assistant professor of medicine within the Division of General Internal Medicine. Adam Newton. Adam is now a clinician specializing in hospice and palliative medicine and internal medicine at Inova in Northern Virginia. Jillian Kyle. 
Jillian will also be joining the faculty here at Pitt as an assistant professor of medicine in the Division of General Internal Medicine. Marina Mutter. Marina will be an academic hospitalist at the University of Colorado next year, where she will continue her education efforts with medical students and residents. Jennifer Jacqueline Rodriguez. Jen will be joining the Oncology Hematology Associates Group at UPMC Shadyside as a hospitalist on the inpatient oncology service. Leah Stem. Leah will be joining UPMC St. Margaret's Family Medicine Residency Program as a faculty member. Corey Tapper. Corey is now an assistant professor of medicine at Johns Hopkins, working in the section of palliative medicine. He will also be serving a role of associate program director for the Hospice and Palliative Medicine Fellowship at Johns Hopkins starting this summer. And finally, Alfred Shockery is graduating from the Certificate in Medical Education program. Alfred will continue as faculty in the Division of General Internal Medicine at the University of Pittsburgh. Hello. My name is Issa Davis, and I am the Associate Professor of Medicine and Cl Clinical and Translational Science, and the Associate Director of the KL2 Clinical and Translational Science Scholars Program. It is my pleasure to be here today to recognize the graduates from the ICRE's various training programs. We will begin by recognizing the graduates from the Career Education and Enhancement for Healthcare Research Diversity Program. The SEED program is a career development fellowship for minorities who are underrepresented in academic medicine or the health sciences. The goal of SEED is to provide a solid foundation for a successful research career. I serve as the director of the SEED program. Jonathan Duvall. Jonathan will continue as a researcher at the Human Engineering Research Laboratories at the University of Pittsburgh and is working toward becoming a faculty member in the Department of Re Rehabilitation Science and Technology. Utibe Essien. Utibe will continue as an Associate Professor of Medicine and Health Services Researcher in the Division of General Internal Medicine and the VA Center for Health Equity Research and Promotion. Ashley Hill. Ashley recently began her second year in her T32 postdoctoral program. She will continue in this program examining the impacts of relationship violence on reproductive health disparities in minority women and girls. Anya Wakuchu. Dr. Anya Wakuchu will be continuing as a neurocritical care fellow at UPMC. Next, we will recognize the graduates of the Career Education and Enhancement for Healthcare Research Diversity Program for medical students. The C2 program provides skills training and mentoring to University of Pittsburgh medical students who are underrepresented minorities in academic medicine and the health sciences. The director of this program is Dr. Utibe Essien. Tiara Bender. Tiara will be continuing her research in pre- and perinatal mandatory reporting policies as a clinical scientist training program scholar over the next year. She hopes to continue to enhance her research prowess as she works towards becoming a physician and clinical investigator. Nia James. Nia will be completing a year-long research fellowship with the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. Chukudi Anyeku. Chukudi will be joining the Clinical Science Training Program at the ICRE. Casey Tompkins Rhodes. Casey will be applying for residency in plastic and reconstructive surgery and will graduate from the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine in 2021. Next, we will recognize the graduates from the Clinical Science Track for Residents. Dr. Kathleen McTie serves as a director for this track. The clinical science track is designed to prepare outstanding internal medicine residents at Pitt and UPMC for a career in academic medicine and clinical investigation by providing them the opportunities to learn and practice clinical research skills during their residency training. Dustin McCurry. 
Dustin will be a chief medical resident in internal medicine before applying to a hematology and oncology fellowship. Elizabeth Beth Ozipak. Beth will be a chief medical resident for the 2020-21 academic year and then plans to pursue a career in academic general medicine with a focus on primary care. Hong Yang Jo Pai. Joe will continue in the internal medicine residency program at UPMC. Next, we will recognize the graduates of the clinical science training program for medical students. The clinical science training program, CSTP, offers clinical research training and scholarships to University of Pittsburgh medical students who are committed to careers in clinical investigation. CSTP trainees engage in mentored research projects and obtain an MS or certificate in clinical research from the ICRE. The director of this program is Dr. Judy Chang. Maz Hassan. Maz will continue his training in the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. Stephen Canton. Stephen will begin his fourth year of medical school this summer. He will pursue residency in orthopedic surgery with a focus in computer vision and machine learning algorithms to improve surgical outcomes and operating room efficiency. Brett Curtis. Brett will also be returning to the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine to continue his training. Carly O'Connor Terry. Carly will continue her fourth year of medical school and then apply to an OBGYN residency. Benjamin Zukulkowski. Ben will be returning to his fourth year of medical school in July and will then be applying for an internal medicine residency position. He will continue his research projects through the Division of Pulmonary Allergy and Critical Care Medicine, as well as the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Benjamin Zussman. Ben will also be returning to medical school at the University of Pittsburgh. Next, we will recognize the graduates of the International Scholars Track. The International Scholars Track, IST, offers training in clinical research and academic medicine to outstanding international medical graduates enrolled in the University of Pittsburgh's Internal Medicine Residency Program. Dr. Peter Bulova serves as the program director for the IST. Mikhail Aleviskos, Mikhail will continue as an internal medicine resident at UPMC. Christina Malarino Hager. Christina will also continue as an internal medicine resident at UPMC. Manaraj Nupain. Manaraj will be entering a critical care fellowship at the National Institutes for Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Didim Sajan. DDIM will begin a rheumatology fellowship at the University of Chicago this summer and continue her research in clinical outcome measures in myositis. Anastasia Ciagiani. Anastasia will continue as a hematology oncology fellow at UPMC. Maria Velez. Maria will begin a hematology oncology fellowship. Congratulations to all of the SEED C2, CST, CSTP, and IST graduates. Hello, my name is Kevin Kramer, and I am a professor of medicine and clinical and translational science at Pitt. I have the privilege of recognizing the remaining graduates from the ICRE's training programs. I'll start with the KL2 Clinical and Translational Science Scholars Program, a multidisciplinary career development program that prepares junior faculty scientists from a broad range of disciplines for independent careers in clinical and translational science. The Clinical and Translational Science Scholars Program is directed by Dr. Doris Rubio. First, Dr. Heather Joseph. Dr. Heather will continue as Assistant Professor of Psychiatry and Pediatrics at Pitt. She was recently awarded a K-23 Career Development Award from NIMH to continue her research on the early signals of in inattention in neonates and infants at familial risk for ADHD. Dr. Tamar Krishnamurti. Tamar will continue as Assistant Professor of Medicine at Pitt. She will continue her research on risk perception, communication, and decision-making in women's health, particularly 
reproductive health. Dr. Deanna Wilson. Deanna will continue as Assistant Professor of Medicine and Pediatrics at Pitt. She will continue her research on harm reduction interventions in adolescents and young adults with opioid use disorders. The last set of graduates are from the Clinical and Translational Science Fellowship Program. The program provides rigorous translational research training to qualified pre- and postdoctoral fellows who effectively create innovative ways to advance research from the initial discovery to improve patient outcomes and health policy. I direct the overall program and oversee the postdocs. Dr. Samuel Poliak from the School of Pharmacy oversees the pre-docs. First, the postdoctoral graduates. Dr. Katherine Eichinger. Katie will continue working as a postdoctoral researcher in the laboratory of Dr. Carrie Empey in the School of Pharmacy. She will continue the development and clinical application of a maternal RSV vaccination. Dr. Elizabeth McGuire. Liz will continue as a postdoctoral scholar in the Department of Psychiatry and continue her research on improving access to mental health services in rural pediatric populations. Dr. Sarah Myers. Sarah will continue her general surgery research uh, residency training and her research on optimal management of hemostasis and thrombosis post-trauma and also on gender differences in the experiences of surgical trainees. Dr. Ryan Orizondo. Ryan will transition to assistant professor of bioengineering at Pitt. He will continue his research in artificial organs and advanced life support systems and initiate work on novel techniques to treat large tissue defects. Dr. Stephanie Rigo. Stephanie will continue to work as a physical therapist at the UPMC Rehabilitation Institute, primarily on the spinal cord injury rehabilitation unit. Stephanie will continue her doctoral studies in bioengineering at the University of Pittsburgh and plans to defend her dissertation next summer. Dr. Clark Beat. Clark was our inaugural fellow in the Learning Health Systems track and spent time downtown conducting projects with the UPMC Health Plan. Clark will be joining Lehigh Valley Health Network in Allentown, PA as a primary care physician and associate medical director for outpatient quality and patient safety. Dr. Justin Yu. Justin will transition to assistant professor of pediatrics at Pitt. He will continue his palliative care research in children with chronic medical complexity. And next, the pre-doctoral graduates. Katie Clancy. Katie will continue as a doctoral student at Pitt in the Department of Computer Science. She will continue her research in machine learning and computer-aided diagnosis. Amber Hill. Amber plans to return for her fourth year of medical school at Pitt and begin applying to pediatrics residency programs in the fall. She will continue her research on the intersection of substance use and adolescent relationship abuse with the Division of Adolescent and Young Adult Medicine. Brian Kiesel. Brian will continue in the pharmaceutics track in the Pitt School of Pharmacy PhD program. He will continue research on analytical methods to support clinical and preclinical investigation of novel anti-cancer drugs. Alexander Layden. Alex will continue working towards his PhD in epidemiology in the Pitt Graduate School of Public Health as part of the MSTP program. He will continue his research on the impact of pre-pregnancy obesity and gestational weight on placental inflammation. Deanna Maurer. Deanna will continue in the Immunology and Microbiology PhD program at Pitt. She hopes to finish her PhD this upcoming fall and pursue a career in industry. Andrea Schilling. Andrea will continue in the Chemical Engineering doctoral program at Pitt. She will continue her translational research that utilizes the natural properties of the immune system to exert therapeutic effects. And finally, Lyndon Wu. Lyndon received her PhD from the Pitt School of Nursing and recently started at St. Clair Hospital's quality department. Her role is to coordinate quality improvement initiatives as well as research projects across various departments. I wish to extend my heartfelt congratulations to all of our graduates from the ICRE's career development, training, and degree programs. Thank you. Hello, ICRE grads. I'm excited that I get to kick this off and wish you a heartfelt congratulations for completion of your program. Special shout out to the CST and IST track folks who I've gotten to know really well, um, as well as the um, T's and K's. Um, I guess my wish for all of you going out into this really complicated world that we all live in is to use your training here, of course, for your science and for your um, career development and also to make this country and this world a better place. So with that, congratulations. Hello, everyone. 
time. You may know me from the online medical writing course or the ethics course, or maybe I sat with you for your competency review or facilitated one of your uh, writing groups. I'd like to join my colleagues in congratulating you on this tremendous achievement. You know, when people ask me why I like to work at Pitt, I always tell them it's because I get to be around people like you. So congratulations. I'd like to say congratulations to all of you and uh, especially to our fantastic group of PhD graduates this year. I'm so happy for all of you for um, completing um, all of these different milestones that you've reached and uh, I wish you the absolute best in the future. Congratulations to all of our ICRE grads, in particular our TL1 predoctoral and postdoctoral uh, scholars who it's been a joy for me to work with over the years. Remember that your passion led to your success at the University of Pittsburgh, and finding your purpose in your career will lead to your success. All the great things you've accomplished lead to a very bright future, and I wish you all the best moving forward. Congrats again. Hi, all. Uh, this is Ken Smith. I want to thank you for your tremendous efforts during this most challenging time and congratulate you on your accomplishment. I look forward to your future work and uh, I hope to work with you uh, at some point in the future. So long and farewell. I'm really excited about your graduation and a special shout out to the translational track uh, folks who are graduating this year. I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Your success is our success and it gives us great pleasure and satisfaction to see all your accomplishments and aspirations to help shape the future of biomedical research and improve health of the community at large. I want to just give you advice, do what you love and be yourself. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Congratulations on completing your program and all your hard work. You spent the last couple of years planting the seeds that will grow uh, into your success after you graduate. My word of advice is to stay in these chaotic times present. And if you have 15 minutes, watch David Foster Wallace's graduation speech at Kenya, This Is Water. Hi, ICRE graduates. Uh, congratulations um, on your graduation. Um, just want to give a shout out to the KL2, C2, and C scholars. Um, it's been a real pleasure to be involved in your training. You're really prepared to go out now. Um, and tackle these complex issues uh, that we have. Um, and I just want to leave you with two quotes. One is by author Ash that says, uh, to achieve greatness, you want to start where you are, use what you have and do all you can. And then in the words of Eleanor Roosevelt, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So you have all that you, uh, you have, you are very talented, go out there and, and do all you can. Congratulations. Um, a hearty congratulations to the ICRE graduates of 2020, um, especially those in the CER track, which we all know is the best track. <laughs> um, we are all so exceedingly proud of you and blown away what you accomplish in your time with us. And it gives us all so much um, hope for the future. Um, and looking forward to seeing what you're going to do in your lives and your careers and what kind of positive impact you can have on the world. Congratulations, Congratulations. Um, to all our ICRE graduates this year, um, especially those graduates from our um, certificate and master's program in clinical research and also our REACH program. Um, 
please take some time to celebrate this accomplishment. Um, this is a big deal and um, in many ways, the first of many steps that you'll take um, in hopefully a very productive research career. Um, as an alumnus of the program myself, I can speak to the fact that the value of your degree um, will really only increase um, with each passing year. Um, so with that, um, congratulations um, on earning your degree and best of luck in your next steps. Congrats to all of the ICRE graduates. Uh, we believe that now more than ever, our society needs clinical and translational scientists that will go on and make a difference. And we know that your tenacity that got you through this training and through this difficult time will help you be even more successful in the future. So all the best and take good care. Congratulations, ICRE grads. You know, in this time of uncertainty and rapid change, it's heartening to see such an incredible group of clinician scientists bringing your skills in clinical research into your cl chosen career paths. Do you know, Hippocrates, Hippocrates is said to have written, that which is used, developed, and that which is not used, wastes away. So looking forward, I am confident that not only will you use, but also develop and even transform medical research to promote health in our patients and communities. It, it is... Um, been such a pleasure to work with so many of you over the last few years. Best wishes. ICRE 2020 graduates, congratulations. I especially want to congratulate the medical education graduates from both the master's and certificate programs. I'm really sad that we can't be uh, together to celebrate this great accomplishment. Each and every one of you has gone above and beyond in your pursuit of a career as a clinician educator, and you will be responsible for training the next generation of healthcare providers. And I know that you are up for this challenge. I am really excited to watch each of you as you progress in your careers. I know that you will become leaders in medical education and you will make the field of medical education better and better. Um, again, congratulations and thank you for your involvement in this program. Hi to all of the iSERI graduates for the certificate in the master's program. I offer my heartfelt congratulations. Um, the work that you've done is tremendous. I also want to give a special shout out to the CSTP scholars. Um, you know, it has been a particular honor and privilege to have this chance of working with you during this past year. Um, each and every one of you have been inspiring and amazing and it's been fantastic to see your growth and the expanse of your knowledge and skills um, in just this one year. And I'm really excited about your futures and the contributions you've already made and the contributions I anticipate that you'll continue to make in your future. Uh, please know that we, as the CSTP program, as the ICRE, are here for you um, whenever you might need us. And please consider us part of your, you know, academic family. Um, you're uh, never going to be alone and uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks. Congratulations to all of you. Since 2000, the Institute for Clinical Research Education has been training future leaders through various graduate, career development, and training programs. Each year, we recognize one alumnus who has made significant contributions to the field of clinical and translational science. This year's recipient of the Distinguished Alumnus Award in Clinical Research is Dr. Cecilia Yates, an alumnus of the Career Education and Enhancement for Healthcare Research Diversity, or the SEED program, and an accomplished researcher and educator. As an associate professor of nursing at Pitt, Dr. Yates conducts research on the cellular and molecular mechanisms of tissue repair and regeneration and its pathogenesis. Her work is frequently cited over 1,400 times, according to Google Scholar, and has been funded by a number of federal and institutional sources. Dr. Yates is also an entrepreneur with five issued U.S. patents and several other pending patents associated with her work. She is the co-founder of the Pittsburgh-based startup Ocugenics, which is developing a potentially revolutionary treatment for fibrosis and eye disease, such as age-related macular degeneration. 
Finally, Dr. Yates is also an active teacher and mentor of nursing, pathology, bioengineering, and medical students at the University of Pittsburgh and nationally. It is truly a pleasure to recognize Dr. Yates today for all of her outstanding achievements. Congratulations. I am deeply pleased and honored to receive this prestigious award from the Clinical Translational Science Institute and the Institute for Clinical Research Education. Both institutes have been fundamental and foundational in establishing my career as a translational scientist. There was an investment made in me in a very personalized manner to allow me to acquire the tools that I needed to establish a multidisciplinary research program across schools um, and universities and other institutes. More importantly, I think was that was key um, about being a part of uh, the ICRE was the multi-level mentoring and countless networking opportunities that were afforded to me to be able to help acquire some of the career development and leadership skills that I needed, but also promote um, scientific discovery and you know thinking as far as I began to navigate and develop a clinical research program. Uh, along with the directors of the CTSI, the directors of the C program, uh, just were completely committed to me and my career and continue to be committed to uh, my career and providing an educational platform that is granted to, you know, to all of their um, fellows and trainees to help navigate through barriers but also develop the sustainability and productivity skill set especially in the current climate of this pandemic. Um, the ability to be innovative and resilient is ever more so a fundamental skill set that is needed to allow for research sustainability. And I think that is just has been a tool and a focus of the ICRE that has been unmatched in my opinion today. So again, I thank um, the directors of the C program. I thank the directors of the CTSI and all of the um, advisory committee and members that afforded me or granted me this very prestigious award. Thank you. Since its establishment in 2002, the medical education degree program has trained over 130 medical educators in the Master of Science and Certificate programs. The alumni of this program have gone on to make valuable contributions to the field of medical education. The Distinguished Alumnus Award in Medical Education is given each year to a graduate who has achieved excellence in scholarship, mentorship, and leadership in medical education. The recipient of this award demonstrates outstanding professional and personal development through both traditional channels and innovative approaches. It is with great pleasure that I name Dr. Adam Sawatsky as the recipient of the 2020 Distinguished Alumnus Award in Medical Education. Dr. Sawatsky completed his Master of Science in Medical Education degree in 2013. He is an Assistant Professor of Medicine in the General Internal Medicine Division at Mayo Clinic College of Medicine and Science and the Program Director of the General Internal Medicine Fellowship at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. It is truly a pleasure to recognize Dr. Sawatsky today for all of his outstanding achievements. Congratulations, Dr. Sawatsky. It's such an honor to be receiving the ICRE Distinguished Alumnus Award for Medical Education. Um, even more so, and just knowing so many of the people that have graduated from this program. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just, when I think back, I'm just incredibly grateful for my time in the master's program. It provided me with invaluable training and experience in medical education scholarship that really has launched my career. Yeah, as I think back, I feel like it's provided me so much more. First and foremost, um, the mentorship I received and I continue to receive from faculty of the program. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful. Uh, as, I, as I think about this award, I keep coming back to a quote, um, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. And so throughout my life, I've tried to choose mentors who I want to emulate in my life and career. 
And so as I think back over my time, so grateful for Dr. Roseanne Granary. She was such an amazing mentor. She was so gracious and yet could also deliver a constructive comment that would uh, spur me on to continue to grow. And I still even find myself when I'm working with residents on teaching skills and providing feedback, uh, echoing the, a, a phrase that she would say so often when I was with her, you know, what are the words that will come out of your mouth? And in those opportunities, uh, just some wonderful teaching moments because of, you know, again, her example. Uh, Dr. Missy McNeil, I still love running into her at national meetings. Uh, those encounters will often turn really quick into speed mentoring sessions as she is quick to ask me how I'm doing and then uh, walking me through whatever situation I find myself in. And still with Dr. Carlos Spagnoletti, she still emails me or I see her at meetings and she encourages me in my, in my career. And now obviously I, you know, since being here at Mayo, I have wonderful mentors like Tom Beckman and Fred Hafferty who continue to encourage me to grow as a doctor and scholar and teacher in person. You know, second, when I think back, um, I'm so grateful for my co-fellows uh, that I was with. Um, just learning how to be a good colleague and collaborator and friend. Um, my co-fellows continue uh, to be an inspiration to me when I see where they go. Um, and it is because of their example, when I first came on staff here at Mayo, my first thing that I did was try to find a, a similar cohort of colleagues at my level who, you know, we could, uh, bounce ideas off of and be creative and support one another, um, just like uh, my co-fellows that I had during my time in training. And so uh, I'm grateful for that. And now, you know, it's interesting. I go back to my quote as I think about going sort of into the middle stages of my career, like how do I be a good mentor? And I'm so thankful for the many examples that I had and really try to emulate them and become the kind of person that I want to, and hope other people want to become. Um, so yeah, and I'm just, again, incredibly uh, honored by this award and I think even more so just grateful for the training and experience I had as part of the, the master's program in medical education. So thank you. My sincere congratulations to all of our graduates. We are proud of your accomplishments and wish you each a successful career. Research careers are difficult to start and challenging to maintain. After all, you're creating new knowledge, building on what is known, leading to new tests and treatments that will impact lives. Today, you're graduating after having taken the first step, training and learning the language and methods of research. The next steps are more difficult, but achievable, building on top of a strong foundation you have started within ICRE. I have three pieces of advice. First, develop a habit of lifelong learning, learning from mentors, your colleagues, your students, mentees, and even patients. Working in teams, collaborating with others is a way to succeed. Second, don't be afraid of failures. Road to research careers is littered with failures. Getting rejection letters for papers and grants is common, and rejection makes your work better and stronger. As they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Third, have a balanced life. Don't miss out on friends, family, community, supporting others as life is short and days move quickly. I wish you the best of luck in your careers. You have chosen a career that is satisfying, impactful, and rewarding. Make the most of it. We have tried to get you on a strong footing through ICRE, which we hope you use to building a bright future. Congratulations, graduates. I want to commend each of you for your accomplishments and look forward to hearing more successes in the future. 
Unfortunately, we are not able to celebrate with you in person as we usually do, but we look forward to Pitt discovering the vaccine so that we can celebrate together, hopefully in the near future. And for those of you who are essential workers and clinicians, thank you for your service. Be well and congratulations. God. 